Hello everyone and welcome back to the world of Percy Jackson. Have you ever been curious about exactly how much time passes during the Son of Neptune? How much are these characters going through in and in what amount of time? How long or how little time passes through everything that goes on in the second book of the Heroes of Olympus series? Today, we'll discuss. And if you haven't seen my previous timeline videos, make sure to check those out before you get to this one. The Son of Neptune takes place about six months after the events in The Lost Hero, which puts the start of this book in June 2010, on the 19th of June to be specific, where we are thrown right into Percy running from two Gorgons, the sisters of Medusa. And while he is running, he runs into this old hippie woman who is actually Juno in disguise. She calls herself June and instructs Percy on how to get to Camp Jupiter, but warns him that as soon as he crosses the river, he will have to leave the gift that he received from the Greeks aside, aka he's gonna lose the curse of Achilles. So Percy takes this hippie woman into Camp Jupiter. She turns into Juno and declares that he is a son of Neptune and is to be included in the Legion. He's then interviewed by Reyna, shown around camp by Hazel, and then later Frank, and taken to Octavian to determine whether or not he can be included in the Legion because the word of a goddess is not good enough. It is determined that he can, in fact, join the Legion, and he attends final muster, where Hazel speaks up for him and he joins the fifth cohort. We also have a Nico interaction where Nico says he doesn't know Percy, Hazel doesn't believe him, and Nico tells Hazel that she can trust Percy, which isn't really helping the I don't know him bit that Nico is trying to have. Percy joins the fifth cohort that evening on the 19th, so we're still on the same day here, is the war games where Octavian kills a fellow camper. Mars comes and Percy realizes he doesn't like Mars and doesn't know why. Frank is given the prophecy from Mars to go on a quest and the fifth cohort wins the war games for their team. It's a really busy day. Oh, and Mars also claims Frank as his son, which Frank is a little disappointed in because he wanted to be the son of Apollo. Can relate. See my Who's Your Godly Parent video for context. Mars also tells Frank that Percy does have to go with them and that they need three people, and so he invites Hazel along for this lovely little trio. And that's a pretty packed day for anybody, but especially somebody who has memory loss and doesn't know where he's been, and doesn't know who he is, besides his name and his girlfriend's name. So, and for your first day at camp, that's, that's a lot too. That's a day. So the next morning, we're on the 20th of June now, is the Senate meeting regarding the quest. And that afternoon, Frank, Hazel, and Percy go to the Legion's Navy to start their quest. And that night, they stop in, I'm gonna mispronounce this name, Minoshino, California, where they see a monster army heading towards Camp Jupiter. They make a stop at the goddess Iris's shop, try to get a call through to Camp Jupiter, are unable to. And Frank uses the gift that Mars gave him to conjure a skeleton to fight off some basilisks. Percy gets very sick, and um, it's just, again, overall, not a great day. And this is seemingly where Percy starts to get some memories back. And we confirm that there is no communication networks that are working, thus leaving the trio unable to contact Camp Jupiter. So then the next morning on the 21st of June, 
our trio arrives in Portland. They discover Ella the Harpy, find Phineas, who wants to keep Ella captive, so Phineas and Percy make a deal. A game of chance. Percy pulls out the Gorgon's blood that he acquired on the first day of this book, which was only three days before. Three days prior? Two and a half days ago? And says, if we each pick one, you write down the location that we need to go to. Either Phineas wins and he gets Ella and his sight back because the Gorgon's blood will heal him. Or Percy wins, they get Ella, they get the location of where Thanatos is, and Percy gets his memories back. Percy thinks that Gaia, who is the big bad of this series, wants him alive, so he asks her, she shakes a bottle, he takes it and wins this wager. So then on the 22nd, the group, and then on the 22nd, the group wakes up in Seattle and ends up at the Amazon headquarters. The group meets Hilla, who is Raina's sister, and Percy technically meets her for the second time, as they met on Cersei's Island all the way back in Sea of Monsters, but Percy doesn't remember, A, because he was 12, and B, because he's just started to get his memories back from having them wiped, and Hilla wants to kill them, or at least the boys, but refrains when the trio tells Hilla that her sister Reyna has sent them to ask for help for Camp Jupiter. The boys are naturally imprisoned, lots of things happen, and Hazel helps them escape after a conversation and deal with Hilla and her loyal Amazonians. Lots of stuff is going on here, I'm not going into that, and then they ride an immortal horse up up to Vancouver. They stop at Frank's grandmother's house, which is surrounded by monsters. So Frank summons Grey, which is what he has named his skeleton friend, to help take out the monster. And the trio plus Ella stay the night at Frank's grandmother's house. That evening, Frank has a conversation with his father, Mars, and his grandmother learns about his inherited skill and they get a decent night of rest and fed. And then they get on a plane and fly to Alaska the next morning after battling it out with some of the monsters and Frank's grandmother passing away. Ella will not go with them, so Percy attempts to dream speak with his brother Tyson and Mrs. O'Leary to come and gather Ella and go to Camp Jupiter. On the 24th of June, the trio arrives in Alaska. They are beyond the gods, and they are attacked, of course. After fending off this attack, they head to Hazel's old home to rest before heading to where Thanatos is being held by the giant Eclaneus. Frank frees Thanatos using his life force, or the fire stick that was cursed to be tied to his life when he was a child, realizes what his family gift actually is to help Hazel defeat the giant that she instigated the resurrection of when she died several decades earlier. They take the giant across the Alaskan border to Canada in order to kill him. The trio collects the abandoned Roman legionnaire gear and weapons and the eagle and bring it back down to Camp Jupiter with the help of the immortal fast horse. They make it to Camp Jupiter as the battle is happening. They meet up with Tyson, Ella, and Mrs. O'Leary and they go into battle with the recovered weapons and the lost eagle. Percy defeats the giant Pelepidus with the help of Terminus, and Camp Jupiter raises Percy up as the new Praetor. And then there is the Feast of Fortuna, after which Hera comes to Percy in a dream, informing him that he will be the glue that holds Camp Jupiter and Camp Half-Blood united in the upcoming battle 
against Gaia and her giants. And then on June 25th, Percy receives a video scroll from one Leo Valdez, informing Percy that a group from Camp Half-Blood is on their way on a vessel known as the Argo II. Percy informs the Senate of their impending arrival and assures the Senate that the arrival is peaceful in nature. And that is the Son of Neptune. Started on June 19th and ends on June 25th, 2010. For a total of six days. So what do you think? Are you surprised at how short the timeline is for the Son of Neptune? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to keep up with all things happening within the world of Percy Jackson and the greater Rick Riordan universe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because that is all we talk about here on Julia Goes. But until next time, stay safe out there, demigods.